This is a video that I'm genuinely surprised doesn't really exist in some form already. I've looked. This is something that's deceptively simple. You watch other people play tabletop role-playing games online, and it all looks pretty straightforward. They look into their webcams, they roll their dice, and the magic happens. It's easy, right? And honestly, it's not all that much harder than it looks. But there's a lot of different layers to the process. There's a few different programs involved, and that's where things start to get a bit fast and hairy, and people's eyes glaze over. Onions have layers. Ogres have layers. Let's just look at this paragraph right here. Tonight, I'm streaming our game to YouTube using OBS. We'll be on Discord for comms. I'm playing with a group of new players that just responded to my interest post. We're using Roll20 for our virtual tabletop. And my friend Steve made us a killer overlay. My audio is sounding great lately after I put a bit of compression on my mic. It's pretty easy to get left behind by all that, or to keep doing things the one way that you're sure will work, because that's what you know. I'm hoping to disarm a little bit of the minefield here, and also highlight some of the things that I found really help. I'm not going to leave out the social dimension and the reality of the culture of play either. The way things are done, or aren't, that's equally important. This video will be one part instructional, one part opinion piece, and one part troubleshooting about the best and worst ways to play tabletop role-playing games online, and to meet people to play them with. I'm the Complex Games Apologist, and I'll be your guide. We are going back to basics. The scope of this video is kind of wide, so let's give you a roadmap. First, we'll talk about ways of communicating and talking with other people to get the game going, the way that you'll hear each other's voices and see each other's faces, using VOIP applications, which are basically internet telephones. Secondly, we'll go over tools that exist to keep track of and share information about the game state. Things like where your character is on a five foot square grid, but also simpler things like sharing slides or visual aids, or keeping track of which of two orcs you've already hit with a spell or sword swing. <laughs> Third, I'll talk about technology and troubleshooting, getting your webcam, microphone, and computer into good shape, and being able to constructively talk to your fellow gamers about how they can fix issues with their connection, their audio, or video that rise to the level of being distracting. And that's where we'll get into the social dimension of things. What are the social norms around playing online? How should or shouldn't you go about things? Which things do people blast like they are very strong rules, but are really more like preferences and you can do your own thing? Finally, and briefly because I'm the least experienced with this bit, I'll talk about the world of streaming your game online. It's one thing to be in a connection and a call with other people and share a virtual table with them. It's another step further which you don't need to go to to broadcast it to the rest of the world. Of course, some people use this process as a form of note-keeping or for posterity or to recap things when they need to refresh their memory. Part 1. Video calling. The way that everyone's faces get seen by everyone's eyes, and everyone's voices get heard by everyone else's ears, is usually accomplished with a video call program. If you want to play a game in real time rather than in text as play-by-post, which is outside of the scope of this video and, in my opinion, is almost an entirely different hobby, if similar, well then you're going to need to at least hook up everyone's voices together. Most of these applications have either an app that runs on tablets or phones or can be finagled to work that way with a little technical know-how. Most of them have a web client or will run in Linux and Mac, so don't count yourself out there either if you're not in the Windows party. The big thing to note here is that everything in this segment works out of the box. If you've been out of the loop back to the days when folks had to set up TeamSpeak and Ventrilo servers, those days where we were obliged to jump through those kinds of hoops are behind us. Among tabletop role players, the big contenders are, as of early 2019, Hangouts and Discord. Both of these apps are going through and have gone through some big changes. Hangouts used to be the go-to app for real-time gaming online. It's a web application, meaning you don't install anything on your computer and it just runs in a tab in your browser. You use your Google account to sign into Hangouts and your Google account will be something like your phone number for Hangouts. 
Once upon a time, Hangouts used to be a built-in part of Google+, which once upon a time was Google's attempt at a quirky Facebook alternative. It had a really different vibe, and in its heyday, it really enabled people to connect based on their interests. As it so happened, the tabletop role-playing community and people who were interested in TTRPGs just ate up Google+, and it ended up being some of the most loyal users of the platform. Hence, Hangouts became the go-to tool. Nowadays, Hangouts is a standalone web app, and throughout 2018, there was a lot of mixed messages coming about if Google was discontinuing it altogether, closing it to consumers to transform it into something for their business suite, or I, I, I don't know. Uh, as of the time of this video, Google says they're not closing up shop on Hangouts, and that eventually Hangouts Meet, their business meeting app, will become available to consumers. No word on when that will happen. But the long and the short of it is that development on Hangouts is over with. Hangouts isn't going to change or improve or get new features, and we'll probably have a hard time continuing to work as browser updates and Windows updates and new webcams and microphones need drivers and compatibility issues resolved. So given that, what is the user experience in Hangouts like, and why are people still using it? Well, there's no support for any add-ons or things like dice rollers. The next thing is that Hangouts likes to full screen whomever is talking at the time, and then switch cameras to whoever talks camera next. One, camera two. Camera one. Camera two. <laughs> Sometimes, and especially when someone's mic is hot and animals are barking or cereal is being crunched, it can get confused, and you're left looking at Ivan while Aloy is talking. This, of course, is worse if someone's mic isn't close to their face and other stuff is getting picked up. We'll talk more about that in the troubleshooting section, though. This led Hangouts users to be big proponents of putting your mic on mute when you're not talking, and turning off mute when you are talking, and then turning it back on when you're done talking. And no, there isn't a keyboard shortcut for push to talk. Otherwise, the app works fine. There's very, very little that you can do to tweak it or adjust settings, but some people just like that about it. One of the main reasons people continue to advocate for using Hangouts is because Google has a feature where you can directly stream a Hangouts call in YouTube without any streaming software from just a page on your YouTube Creator Studio. The quality isn't very great and it's impossible to do anything like overlays. You won't find a button to do this anywhere in the Hangouts app. It's actually hidden behind a couple layers of pages in YouTube Creator Studio. We'll talk about the pros and the cons of this approach to streaming in the streaming section of this video. Discord is the new kid on the block. Its core functionality is set up so that you can create something that looks, talks, quacks, and acts like a TeamSpeak server, basically a set of rooms where people can talk using just voice. Each of the rooms or channels has its own chat log, which is persistent, and anything like YouTube links or Imgur links and the like get auto-thumbnailed to the chat log. In order to invite people to your Discord server, you send them a unique URL, which you can put an expiration date on. And this is a way of managing who's invited to your game or not. Because Discord is meant to model TeamSpeak and the Guild server model for role-playing, you also get the opportunity to summon dice bots into your server because you're the admin. And those can take care of all the roly roly business right there in the chat line. There are dice bots out there that can do complicated stuff, up to and including the Fantasy Flight Star Wars dice. Which is nice. The focus in Discord is on voice-only interactions, and while there is a video call mode, which puts everyone's face up Brady Bunch style, which I prefer over Hangouts camera switching style, a lot of the features of the text channels and the dice bots don't play nice with Discord's video call functionality, because video calls are a direct to user to user thing, and so the chat box for them isn't a server chat box. Uh, so the dice bot advantage won't be there if you do want to use Discord for video calls. The other options for communications are either regarded as unreliable and low quality, like Roll20's built-in voice and video, or you have to pay for them, like Zoom Messenger, which has an amazing video call quality, but is pretty expensive. Or they're considered kind of shady and bad to have installed on your computer, like Skype. Or are kind of complicated to set up, like TeamSpeak's video call plugin. So with communications and VOIP programs out of the way, let's talk about virtual tabletops and how you can manage all the details of the actual game part of the game.